Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Hannah here from Blue Ferret Boarding and we have been taking this month to talk a bit more about ferrets in general. So this week we're actually going to talk about the ferret and its uh, close relatives. Not so much as its mum, dad and sister, but more about the species related to it. So the first thing to point out is that a ferret is not a rodent, which is again quite a common misconception that ferrets are rodents. And a rodent, the definition of a rodent is an, an animal where its teeth keep growing which is one of the main reasons that a rodent will gnaw to continually keep its teeth um, short. And so a gnawing animal like a rat or a, um, a, a, a mouse or a, I believe a hamster, I might have that wrong. Um, I'm not as good on my herbivores. Um, they all will gnaw to keep those teeth short. A ferret doesn't need to do that. It's not a rodent. Its teeth do not grow past um, uh, past adulthood. They will, just like us, they're there for life then. That's the most important thing. A ferret is of its own group. It's part of the mustelid family. I'm not going to bore you with the Latin names because right now they're not of importance to this. It's just showing off. And to be honest, I'd be Googling the names to check them, make sure I'd got them right anyway. So why bother? But it is part of a bigger family. And some of those are obvious. Think about weasels and stoats. And even now, sometimes some of the rescues will get some lovely, kind member of the public who finds a little weasel. I don't know how they catch them, but they manage to catch a weasel and they bring it in thinking it's a stray ferret. And often it's a rescue or the vet who has to sort of identify it and go, no, actually, that is a that is a weasel. Where did you find it? We need to release it back. So there's still a lot of similarities uh, for people, but weasels are much smaller and browner and the, the facial markings are different. So you've got stoats and you've got weasels. What's the difference? Well, a weasel is weasel be recognisable and a stoat's totally different. Um, but on top of that, then you have things like otters. And otters, if you watch an otter, everything about it is so similar to a ferret. They are different. And some things that the otters do are different to ferrets, but they're quite big creatures but they are still part of the mustelid family but obviously they love the water and that's where they are most comfortable. Other firm family favourites are the pine martin which are coming back into the area and I try and post from the Vincent Wildlife Trust who do a lot of work with pine martin and with bats as well and I try and share some of their posts and put some of their information up but they're great to follow if you're interested in the return of the pine martin to the area but that again is very much related to the ferret family they're all part of this mustelid family the closest uh, cousin is the polecat as we've talked about before and you will often get uh, ferrets with polecat colourings, but it's still a ferret. So often people will say to you, oh, yes, I had a polecat once. And what they're meaning is they had a ferret with polecat colourings. However, you can crossbreed polecats, European EU polecats with ferrets and get what we call an EU cross. However, that is not something that should be done lightly. It's can be dangerous for your fingers and there are licenses involved. EU polecats are very much a wild animal and should be treated as such and there are uh, laws on capturing and breeding from a wild polecat so please don't just take it upon yourself to think it's a good idea. It's not because you're then introducing a wild animal genes into a domesticated population, which is going to result in ferrets that are potentially not as predictable and that will have a slightly more wild temperament, which is not great if they're meant to be pets. So polecat are also mustelid. So we have otters, pine martin, stoats, weasels. Did I mention polecats? 
we have mink is the other one now mink as you all know sadly are too much favored for their fur rather than for themselves and again i believe you need licenses for mink but they are a lovely fluffy animal um, but they are again a wild animal and they a bit like otters like their water so that's another one and they are still quite similar to a very fluffy ferret um, but they are a wild animal Past that then you have badger which is part of the higher up family again so we're looking a little bit higher there you have badgers which are part of the mustelid family wolverine not something we're familiar with around here other than in marvel other than in marvel comics but they are a sight that you can find in the australasias other family cousins then are the honey badger and I'm trying to think of them I think the red panda possibly if I've got that right but I'm not sure things that aren't related but might be thought to be related are things like meerkat and things like that and I don't believe they are part of prairie dog they're not part of the same family from my understanding but another close relative that is actually has its own category so higher up the the chain it is still part of the overarching family of forget what it is it's not just the mustelid it's that higher up one the badgers are in and skunk have their own little definition because skunk you will quite often find a ferret owner has skunk as well and skunk are very very similar in terms of caring for as ferrets and they are very popular as pets as well it is illegal in Britain, I'm very glad to say, to descent a skunk. You are not allowed to descent a skunk. And for that, I'm very grateful because I think, you know, you need to take the consequences if you're going to own a skunk. And I have friends who've owned a uh, skunk who have never actually skunked at all. Um, as long as they are kept as pets, they know what they're doing. They're not scared. They're not ever, you don't jump on them and go, boo. <laughs> they're going to be fine you know again it's a bit of a misnomer the difference with skunk is that they are actually omnivores so you can feed them a lot of fruit have i mentioned ferrets are not omnivores they are carnivores they are obligate carnivores and that is one of the massive differences between skunk and ferrets but those are just some of the family favorites of the ferret family the more cousins and the more distant cousins I've forgotten some, I know I have, so remind me of those who I've forgotten down below and we will see you next week. I hope you're enjoying your summer holidays.